Hello, my name is Dennis Shepherd, and I want to read for you today again a poem that I've just written, a poem about intimacy. I'm on holidays at the moment and I'm feeling uh, quite relaxed. We're down at Peaceful Bay in Western Australia here, um, a beautiful place in the world, and uh, again an ideal opportunity to contemplate poetry. I had been thinking for a while about writing a poem to explore intimacy. I'd been thinking about interconnectedness and how everything is dependent on everything else. The perfect balance that the world seems to support, with a subtlety that goes far deeper than the day-to-day -day affairs of man. I'd been thinking about karma and how my mind exists in the world I create. My thoughts then continued to notice how I create energies of desire and aversion, and how I then cling to the conflict and trouble that I'm creating. I could start to see how this process goes on to unbalance my energy further, keeping me in continual turmoil. Then as a counterpoint, I was noticing what happens when I have stillness as my first reference point, or datum, before I start creating my world. One can see all of the conditions coming out of the still space that we call mind, and I was beginning to see that this pure consciousness is the beginning and the ending of the creation process. I could notice the births and deaths of troublesome conditions as they begin and then finish. I began to notice that this matrix of stillness and emptiness was creating an environment where I could more easily let go of all the desires and aversions. So my energy could then remain more stable and balanced. All these thoughts were swirling around when one day I went to listen to a guest speaker at our Buddhist centre. The talk was by Roshi Rospolita. He is of the Diamond Sangha tradition. And he's a poet and he's also a well-practiced Buddhist. He spoke that night of sitting on his cushion in meditation, then realizing that the entire universe was sitting there with him. And because I recognized so completely what he was saying, this concept did start to come into my poem. Then a couple of days later, my friend who fixes my computers came to do a job. He is a champion of the scientific method and is not overly religious, but he is very open and he is one of the most intelligent people on the planet. He was bitten by a venomous snake and the circumstances that followed meant he was not treated in a timely way. He nearly died. He ended up with some curious maladies which meant that he has not been able to work normally. But he has been left with the clarity to assemble enormous treatises on any subjects that interest him. And we often talk about physics and the latest in the quest for a grand unified theory of the universe. And this day he came and just out of the blue he said, I cannot see why we need to have distance involved in the mass energy equation. I don't know how he got to that, but it was clear he was right on the boundary of relativity and quantum. And it fed right into my thoughts on this poem because I had been thinking about pure consciousness and what I call its fungible nature. The Buddha had said consciousness comes together like a string of pearls, but without the string. In the Buddha's text, it, says, it is said that each pearl is called a kalopa. And it is said that kalopas come together and fall apart trillions of times in the wink of an eye. The Buddha is referring here to the nature of consciousness. We can also deduce here the fungibility or interchangeability of a pure consciousness before it builds further into what the Buddha called the kendas or aggregates. He saw the pure consciousness itself is the first of his five kendas or aggregates. And I've given a talk at the Buddha Society of Western Australia on fungible consciousness and it is available as a YouTube broadcast. broadcast but it is available on my website here and also on the BSWA's website. As an aside, when the Buddha was asked about the beginning of the universe, he said that he had looked back over 24 kalpas and no beginning could be seen. A kalpa he, decide, he defined as a universal cycle. A universe from beginning to its ending is a kalpa. And to give an idea of the length of a kalpa cycle, he said that if you get the finest gauze cloth from Benares and you drag the cloth over the highest mountain in the Himalayas, by the time that mountain would be worn to the ground is the approximate length of time for a kalpa. It is instructive to realise that the Buddha saw 
or said he saw, this juxtaposition of astronomical time and quantum time, along with all his teachings, right inside his own fathom-long length of body. It was inevitable that my friend's insight about leaving distance and therefore time out of the mass energy equation would feed right into my poem on intimacy. The fungible nature of the packets of pure consciousness and how they build together underscores our interconnectedness and the intimacy that becomes apparent when we see the universe inside each and every one of us. So now I hope you will enjoy and appreciate my poem, Intimacy. The touch of my breath on the tip of my nose and gratitude flows as pure consciousness grows. This living earth providing a niche for me in a universe so grand, I wonder, how can it be? My being shaping into the space, each moment feels like prose, shifting and shaping, becoming anew, like changing the Emperor's new clothes. Reflections mirroring and coming at me and forming new relationships bizarre. Infinite choices are driving me, strings pulled from mirrors afar. Grasping onto my consciousness as the only thing that I know, with fertile space seeded as my habits sow. Birth and death comes in a continuous stream, begging the obvious, is this a lucid dream? Reflections always seem relative to the conditions that I inhabit and grow. But a stream of consciousness is there to back up, to produce a new life in the moment of flow. Contemplating the node of this energetic connection, I see my latent desire ready for resurrection. Then a moment of insight, I sit on my cushion aware. The universe is sitting with me while I get lost in the glare. The momentary oneness of this insight so pure helps me understand how life's work can obscure Getting lost in life's conditions as they reflect inside my mind causes me to go on living lifetimes so blind. The intimacy of that moment with the universe existing in me, the connections to everything show how complete I can be. If I can let go of the conditions and let them relax back into the space, a timeless world will develop, the stillness taking me to grace. To develop the stillness becomes my life's passion. A beautiful priority that leads to compassion. As I see all the wonderful connections supporting me, wisdom tells me I am on the path to be free. The stillness contains potential for infinity to exist. Pure consciousness in the matrix with energy moving to persist, aggregating into creation of all that is known while forming the space to contain the stories that are grown. One sees that absence is not a quality of emptiness or stillness. The space that they form sees with potential and fullness. Fungible packets of pure consciousness assembling together, arrays that reflect a story that I can choose as life's measure. Each packet of pure consciousness can exist without time. Its energy known when I stop, no movement reflecting my mind. This packet itself, a condition, and if allowed, will eventually cease, leaving the unconditioned to know in beauty and purity and peace. The paradox of this insightful moment, where knowledge is enlightened and complete, shows the intimacy that is always profoundly inherent, juxtaposed with the blind ignorance we see as creation so sweet. The trouble and dis-ease that is the hallmark of living unaware with birth and death forces me to wake up to this truthful knowledge to let go, to be unconditioned and to have great gratitude for my breath.